Hello and welcome back. This is the 11th part of the heat load calculation for the Valtillo house that was in Gulf Coast Town, Texas, and we've moved it to Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, this section we're doing ceilings. Uh, this is the survey here. Uh, information that you need to know up here at the top, you have your footprint. Let's use the magic circle. There we go. Up here we got the footprint. And then you have uh, this information right here where it says ceiling uh, FHA vented attic under dark shingle roof, no radiant barrier. We have R30 insulation in the top, and our ceiling is horizontal. In other words, it's just a flat ceiling. Um, also, you know, the wall here, we know they're eight feet high, so we got eight feet high ceilings. So I put this information down here again, just to make it just a quick reference. Everything house dimensions are 40 by 30. So that gives us a total of 1,200 square foot right there. <clears throat> Our attic is FHA vented. And what FHA vented means, I'll show you a quick little picture of this. Where is it? Right here. And it's just talking about, you know, d uh, what is your venting requirements, you know. Uh, do you have like a, a continuous uh, rooftop uh, eave up there with a ridge? Do you have side vents with a little whirly birds on them? Or do you have like gable vents and everything? And a lot of times it'll pull in through the soffits under the bottom and go out. You need to have a vented ceiling to keep moisture and extreme temperature from building up in your attic. And the general requirement, which you'll see for most of them, is one square foot of vented area for each 300 square foot of ceiling. So real quick, if our ceiling is 1,200 square foot right here, so for 1,200 square foot, 300 divided into 1,200, you need about four foot of venting area. And you know, you wanna be equal on it. Like I said, it should be an equal distribution of exhaust out to in. Of course, heat rises, cool air would go up through here and drag a lot of that moisture and heat out from the top of the attic and keep it a little bit cooler. So our, our attic is an FHA vented attic, like a lot of homes are. You can't have a spray foam ceiling completely sealed, a little bit different, but this right here is your atypical normal house construction everything. And there you go, your floor area. And just remember your floor area, if you have a horizontal flat ceiling, your floor area is equal to your ceiling area. So both of those would be the same, would be the truth. So let's look at the Valtillo house in Gulf Course, Texas. This is worksheet D. And of course, your HTD, uh, CTD, uh, CLTD, and your daily range would come from worksheet A, which you should already have at the top of this. Uh, columns, once again, we go one, two, three, four, five, etc., going from left to right across through here. This is a column, this is a row, okay? And then uh, reference, this is basically where you'd find that information. What table would I find this information on for to answer column number one? Uh, like here, number two column, I'd use survey. So we're down here on ceilings, number 10. And you can see we have a construction number from the book. We have a slope. Remember, we know we have a horizontal or flat ceiling, so we got zero on that if you had a... Um, pitch ceiling, vaulted ceiling, uh, recess ceiling. Like I said, you'd have to do a little geometry and, and measurements and you know distance and everything and, and get the total surface area of what's actually exposed. So ours is zero. So like I said, you see right here, they have the 40 by 30 for the 1200. And then we have a couple different areas in here that we've never really dealt with before. Like I said, areas of opening. Uh, you know, you'd have to have some type of skylight going through the ceiling all the way from top to bottom in order to have an opening like that. And that's atypically what they're talking about if you have a skylight. Our home does not have a skylight, so we don't see anything there. So we get a total square footage. We still have some areas that are grayed out. Uh, this one here is for exposed slab edge that deals with floors, so that will not be used in this part right here. And column number 11 here, which is group number for walls. Only walls have group numbers. 
So like I said, we don't have anything there. So we have a lot of open space right here. And we're just going to go across through here. And of course you see here the total area, the heating area, and the cooling HTM that you need to use. So let's take a look at our worksheet. And we'll bring these up. And this is your J1AE. And this will be where we're putting this in. Now you have partition ceilings and you have full ceilings or totally exposed to attic ceilings. Partition ceilings deal with walls that are not directly tied to the attic itself. Okay, so we're just gonna be doing this one right here because our home is only on this one right here. Okay, so this one right here will be in A. All right, so ceilings. Let's look at worksheet D. And we'll look at our tables and what else we have to do on this. So we'll be starting right here. This is our ceilings, as you see, below grade walls. I put an NA and just scratched it out right there so we don't have to worry about it. So the first thing we need to do is find our construction number. This is gonna to go to our table 4A, ceilings. And basically, you look at whatever information was given on here. So we know it's a vented attic ceiling, dark shingle roof, no radiant barrier, R30 insulation, horizontal. Okay, so when we're looking down through these tables, we get to construction under insulated ceiling under attic, so that's us. Ventilation options, vented to FHA specifications, that's us right there. Roofing material, asphalt shingles, and of course color, these are going to be dark, like a uh, black or dark brown. <clears throat> and of course, 16B is going to be the first part of the construction number, vented attic, dark asphalt shingles. And then the next part of it, the dash 30, comes from actually from the R value. So if we got R30 value right here, got R30 value, that R30 value is going to make for a full number 16B-30. So our first base here will be 16B-30. <coughs> and this just references us to our work page there. <clears throat> Next to be our slope, we have no type of ceiling slope on this one. Let's go back to our survey. <clears throat> so we have it's horizontal, so zero slope, 0, 0.00 zero, zero for that. Okay, next column is also off the survey. Feet, how, how how many feet is this? So we got a 40 by 30 house, so 40 by 30. So the first number will be 40, 40.00. And next number would be 30.00. Next line is C2 times C3. So column two times column three, so 40 times 30 gives us 1200 square feet. make this fit real clean. There we go. All right, next is area of opening. So if we had any skylights or anything like that, we would subtract this number right now. But we don't have any skylights, so it's 0, 0.00 again. So our total ceiling square footage, our net area of it, is C4 minus C5. So 1,200 minus 0 gives us 1,200. All right, next is exposed slab edge. It's grayed out, so we don't do that calculation. Now we finally get to do our U value. This is gonna be from table 4A. So we go back to table 4A. And before we do, we wanna look and see what type of insulation we had. Now we had R30 insulation, so that's gonna play the part in this one right here. So let's go to table 4A. And here you go, we're looking at it. And these are your U-value columns here, and this is your insulation values. So our insulation is R30, so our U-value is 0 0.032. There we go. And next is our HTD. What is our HTD, or temperature differential outside to inside? And we got 46. And then finally, 
heating HDM, C8 times C9. So 0 0.32. We'll bring the calculator up for this one. 0 0.032 times 46. And we get 1.4. Four seven two. Okay. All right. Next would be group number. Group number only does in walls, so that area is grayed out. Moving to the next one, our CLTD. <clears throat> now this is going to go back up to here, up to the top, right up here. Like I said, your CLTD for ours is twenty, and of course we've got that value from right up here. That's all the information you need right there. And of course, we have a medium temperature differential from day to night temperature. So that's going to make it 20. There's our CLTD of 20, medium temperature differential. So we're looking at 55. Okay, down here, 55.00. And then finally, once again, C8 times C12. So column eight right here. 0 0.032 times 55. We'll slide this over so we can see our calculator real good. 0 0.032, that's this number right here, column 8, times column 12, just right here, times 55. And we get 1.76. <coughs> and there you go. And there you have it. That is all of the calculations that we had to do on worksheet D. We can now transpose over. Uh, you noticed on the other form, we had, let's go back to the Valtilo house, the original one. Because like I said, referencing back to what you're seeing is important. And remember, we have dark shingles. So let's go back to the Valtilo house, to their worksheet, and looking at what we got. And see, it has 30, uh, it has 16B 30 AD. Uh, and all that's basically saying the AD that they added on there is asphalt dark shingles. So let's go ahead and put that in on ours so we can transpose that over. So just put an AD on the end right there, and we'll make that a little smaller so it fits a little better. There we go. And now we got our construction number and everything else ready to go. <coughs> now, all we got to do is transfer our numbers over. <coughs> As always, just like the Valtilo house here, I've put everything, let's go back to this one, this one right here. I've put everything in green, so your square footage is going to go back to your J1. That construction number is going to go back to your J1. Your heating HDM is going to go back to your J1. And your cooling HDM. So those columns, column 6, 10 and 13 along with column 1 go back to the original form. So let's go ahead and do that. And we'll bring up our J1IE that we've been working on. So the first thing we need to do is get our construction number. I'm going to copy that. And it's going to go right here. Okay. Next is our heating HTM. So our heating HTM come over here and it's 1.472. And that's going to go there. <coughs> now we need our <coughs> excuse me, cooling HTM. Copy that. Paste it right there for our cooling HTM. And then all we need finally is our square footage, which is 1,200 square foot. Copy that, and that's going to go right there. <coughs> and we'll just squish it right in there. There we go. <coughs> Excuse me. So we can go ahead and do this number right here. I'm going to get rid of this box. We can do this number right here, which is also 1,200 square foot, your total area. Of, this. of course, like I said, this load area is going to be the same here and here. Uh, there are some more areas up here at the top that we can actually fill out now. Like I said, you know, we have a couple things up here, exposed wall, length, width, gross, everything like that. And, of course, ceiling, slope, zero, gross area. We'll be able to fill this out as well. Uh, 
a lot of this stuff you may do be, be doing by like room name or something like that but this is a block load in other uh, block load remember is when you have one thermostat and the whole temperature of the entire box it's basically one temperature as opposed to zone control where you may have one room 68 degrees another room 72 degrees another room 73 degrees so some of this information we're going to be able to fill out and we can look at our original J1AE here and this is where they got some of their numbers like exposed wall 140 let's see where they got some of these numbers 140 140 gross exposed wall let's do the ceiling since that's what we're on right now ceiling slope zero total square footage 1200 so we can go ahead and fill that number in 1200.00 uh, of course our floor we can fill it out because the floor is 40 by 30 same as the ceiling because we have a flat horizontal ceiling same area so that becomes 1200 square foot there and then like I said uh, exposed walls 140 in length 8 feet high 8 feet high partition walls 18 so we can go ahead and grab those numbers too and go ahead and transpose them over onto here so that way we got everything filled out it's eight our long wall was 18 gross area this was 120 11 20 and 144 Okay. <clears throat> all right, now that we got all those other distances filled out and everything like that, we can go back to our ceiling and finish our calculation up right here. Now, to do our heat and HTM, as always, you're gonna use uh, your BTUs, I'm sorry, heat and BTUs, you're gonna use your HTM times your square footage to give you that number, and then your cooling HTM by your square footage to give you your BTUs cooling. So let's bring the calculator forward, and here we go. <clears throat> So first one is 1.472 times 1,200. And there you go. We got a big, large number. So we're going to have to really work to get this in there. 1,766.400. And I'm going to adjust the size on this one a little bit to make it fit a little bit better. There we go, because this is a large number. Your ceilings is your biggest surface area and usually the hottest temperature differential right there, depending on how well it's insulated and everything. That's why insulating there is probably your best bet on money-wise. So you're going to have large numbers here. Okay, cooling, 1.76 times the square footage, which is 1,200. And we get 2,000. 112.000. We can make it fit. It'll fit. There we go. <clears throat> so there we go. And of course, we don't have any partition ceilings. Those are, like I said, you know, if you had knee walls, stuff of that type of nature. Uh, so we don't have any like that in there. So that's going to be NA all the way across through there, and that's going to be loaded, loaded out. Uh, in the next video we'll be covering, it will be passive floors. Uh, we have a slab floor on this house. It's built on slab, so this will be our next calculation.